everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am excited to have my good friend Orville Klein on the podcast. He is a legendary Ableton certified trainer since 2009. He's well known for working with many established artists. Um, He's DJed on four different continents at festivals all over the world, including EDC Vegas, Ultra Miami, Ultra Europe, Spring Awakening, North Coast, Summer Camp, the list goes on and on forever. He also ran the live DJ group Porn and Chicken, which was the number one party in the Midwest for almost a decade. He's won several awards for different commercials and international contests. He's released music on over a dozen different record labels over the years. I think he's a fantastic DJ. I think he's a wonderful Ableton certified trainer, and I've had him do several workshops for events that I've hosted with Ableton user groups. Today we talk about a lot of things, but I think most importantly, drum roll please, the Ableton Push 3 is out today. Very, very exciting stuff. And we do a deep dive on all the wonderful, beautiful features that the Ableton Push has to offer. We also talk about other things and new updates with Live 11.3, such as the synth drift, the new updated auto warp feature, among other things. Make sure you give Orville a follow in the show notes. And also, real quick before we dive into this episode, just want to say I posted a recent listing for having somebody help me with the podcast as far as doing guest outreach and management, and I was overwhelmed with how many people responded. So thank you so much to all of you that were interested or reached out. Really, really appreciate it. Much love, everyone, and let's dive into this episode with Orville. Hey, we're back. Yeah, so... Uh, let's get into it. That was a fun practice run. We just talked for five minutes and none of it recorded, so that's always great. Shout out to Zencaster for, <laughs> for not coming through. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, man, we were just talking about you being an OG in the Ableton Certified Trainer community. You've been a certified trainer since 20 or 2009. That was, you said like a year or two after they started doing certified training? I think it was, I might be misquoting, but I I think it's like the second round. They did like the initial, the first ever certified trainers happened. And then the the second round that happened like a year later or so was, uh, that's that's when I became certified. So cool. shout out to Thomas Falds for... Guy yeah. kind of getting taking the lead on getting me in, and we both became certified at the same time. He's oh, now nice. uh, our Ableton brand manager for the Midwest and stuff. So, big shout out to Tommy. I love Thomas. He's done a lot for me and has like really encouraged me to get certified. And I owe a lot to him too. Like, hats off to that guy, Thomas. Yeah, if you're cheers. listening, cheers, cheers to Thomas. Should send him a Christmas card or something. I know he's listening, so <laughs> he will be listening. No, I love that guy. <laughs> Yeah, I was sad because I left his territory and now I'm working with Alberto. Alberto is a G also, though. He's Oh, he's the man. It was sad to see Thomas go, but I feel very lucky to also hang out with Alberto. He's a good dude. Actually just got off the phone with him. And we were talking about the Push 3, which we're going to dive oh, into awesome. in this episode. Yeah. Cue happy music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's announced today. We were on a certified trainer private webinar a couple of days ago, so it'd be a week before this episode goes live, talking about the Push 3 and Drift and mostly just the Push 3 because it's... It's massive, too. There's so much to so talk crazy. about what it's... I, I, I think it's going to be... I predict it being a game changer piece of hardware. I, re, I really do. Yeah, me too. Like, um, I, I, I'm most excited about just having Ableton away, completely disconnected from the computer. Yeah. Um. Back in my day, like around the time when I first became Ableton certified, um, I was doing a ton of Ableton DJ sets, DJ sets using Ableton Live as the main host. And, um, you know, it was just, it was really fun, just like the expandability of what you can do from a performance standpoint with Ableton Live. And a lot of producers still use it, but I kind of like in the last like decade or so, I kind of shifted to primarily DJing on the CDJs just because my, I just didn't trust my laptop as much. Um, I had laptops fail or crash and oh, be yeah. a little bit laggy or buggy, but now it's like, I feel like I'm able to take all the flexibility of what you can do for a session performance in Ableton Live and then have it in a piece of hardware that is stable, you know, taking it away from the laptop. So, yeah, that's always been the thing too, is like, now I feel like I have to carry like 20 less things playing live with a push three. 
which before, you know, I liked bringing it to play it live, but then I was like, I have to plug in my laptop. I have to have, you know, MIDI hub to plug in all the different MIDI controllers. I have to like this and that. Audio interface. Dude, audio interface, MIDI interface. Yeah, it's, we should talk more details about that and we will, and we'll nerd out real hard about the push three because there's a billion things to talk about. Um, but for people that don't know you, tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like how'd you get into Ableton, your music backgrounds, all the things. Yeah. You know, music has been a lifelong pursuit and it just kind of naturally led me to Ableton. You know, I started off as a saxophone player in elementary school and then, then I got to started playing guitar and got into the whole metal and punk and hard rock and industrial band phase. And, um, as I was like writing music with my bands and, and playing shows, I wanted to be able to record the bands that I was in. So that kind of led me to discover computer recording and then digital co- music, I guess, do digital production inside of a computer back in the day, which let that kind of steered me towards electronic production and stuff like that. And um, then at the same time, I started DJing and getting heavier in that direction, less into the whole band world. I went to recording school. Um, it used to be a school called Music Industry Workshop into Chicago, where I, I learned the ins out of like working a big SSL console and working with Pro Tools and bands. So that really kind of gave me a solid foundation on the the i guess the traditional analog world of the whole um recording technology uh universe and then from there i I started getting i just kind of discovered ableton live along the way like the first version i had was version four or three and it actually came with pro tools i bought a copy of a pro tools mbox and um it actually gave you a full license of ableton live included with pro tools and it was meant to be like kind of a complimentary piece of software and back then it was is way more limited to, to what it can do now so i don't think anyone from avid or pro to digidesign back then looked at it as any kind of a threat um yeah little did they know <laughs> little did they know right <laughs> and then you know of, and at first i didn't understand it because i was so used to the traditional daw like pro tools and it didn't quite make sense and then i i revisited again about a year or two later and then all of a sudden it just clicked like I got um, it just like, holy shit, this totally makes sense. I got this, the session view and being able to use it as a performance tool. And I was able to work so much faster on it. Yeah. And, um, and at the time, then I, I, you know, I started getting heavy into it, um, producing music, using it as a live performance tool. And I started teaching it here in Chicago all at the same time. And just, and, you know, and that journey like led me to perform on four different continents around the world. Um, all the major EDM festivals I threw was throwing the number one dance party in Chicago for about a decade called Born a Chicken. And yeah. um, I've got to work with hundreds of students and all kinds of, I've done lectures at universities around the country and I'm still, still doing that stuff now. And I can, I, I, I can, I have a big, uh, I have to give big credit to Ableton for really taking me on this whole music career journey. I don't know if I, I probably I would have been doing stuff with music without it, but it would have been completely different from where I'm at now. So, yeah, yeah that's 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 my background. <laughs> In case that, you guys mean, didn't know, you've done a lot of stuff for sure. We could probably just do a whole podcast and all the adventures you've had performing and playing shows, <laughs> which I'm sure there's some wild stories there. <laughs> Definitely, I think you're honestly one of the best certified trainer presenters I've seen. I've seen quite a few presentations and workshops with Ableton Live. Thank you. But but I have to say you are definitely at the top of the list. I've I've seen a lot of workshops and presentations where they're like turning knobs or they're like clicking and making stuff happen, but not always necessarily explaining really well why and what is happening while also creating music or something that's actually engaging and entertaining rather than just like a bunch of noise farts. I feel like you do a really good job of like presenting and explaining while making really cool stuff. Wow, you got an assistant over here bringing yeah, you fears. Yeah, my intern and... just showed up. Oh, <laughs> That's a good intern right there, dude. I need to get one of those. Fucking intern. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm recording a podcast interview right now. I was in the oh, area. oh, all right. dude, thank you so much. You got it. You got it. I'll see you later. Yep. That's shout out to RV Mala, one of our uh, our studio partners what here up, at the RV? Music Garage. <laughs> yeah, man, I need to hire somebody to bring me Dropped drinks. Off during... Some 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 uh, caffeine, so. Is that the Starbucks Frappuccino? I used that to- is the Starbucks Frappuccino. Those things got me through college, <laughs> man. I think I'm one step closer to diabetes because of those. <laughs> Drink so many. 
<laughs> yeah, they're good though. But anyway, yeah, man, I, I love your presentations. Last time I hung out with you was in Indianapolis. I had you come oh, man. on to an Ableton user group. And then obviously you were in Porn and Chicken. And I happened to run into the guy, I think like weeks before you came out to do the event. And he happened to own a really legit chicken limo. And it was yeah. like the, the chicken head on top of the limo is like six feet tall. It's just massive chicken. That was a crazy night. That was that was a wild night. <laughs> it turned into <laughs> it was a pretty good yeah, time. The the workshop was really well. It was solid and uh was we fun. had a, a solid turnout. And uh yeah, man. and we ended up just like going out and hitting the town pretty hard afterwards, making the rounds. We sure yeah. did. It was a and, little fuzzy the next morning, but it was yeah. a good time. I think I woke up on the floor. Like <laughs> you did. <laughs> it was it was a proper Indianapolis Ableton <laughs> workshop night. You know, only the finest for our presenters. Whenever I run a user group, I want to make sure everybody has a wonderful experience. So yeah, it's part of the hospitality. Yeah. I just, you know, and I think it was that was about a year ago and just uh a few weeks, like about a month ago, I went back and and did another presentation at in Indianapolis, and it was a and I ended up uh, DJing at the Patron Saint afterwards. Oh, was, dude, sad I missed that. Yeah, it was a it was a lot of super last minute, but it was it was a great time there too. So it's always fun in Indianapolis. It's our one of our sister cities, you know. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, I've been to Chicago so many times growing up in Ohio, but then I moved to Indy for like seven years. Now I'm in Denver, but I was back actually visiting the fam and I was stoked to come out to that user group you were doing, but I got COVID. I was like, Damn oh it. no. Yeah. Oh, that's, no. It sucks. I know. I was looking forward to seeing you, but next time we'll next time. Yeah. We'll just have to link up in Denver. That's yeah. Denver is always a blast too. So. Or, or I'll come to Chicago as well. Yeah. Come yeah. to Denver, man. I'm helping out with the user group here now and We've been really fortunate to have pretty decent turnouts. I mean, we've had anywhere from like 30 to 90 people showing up. Oh, wow. Um, regularly, at least. That's, so it's That's awesome. That's awesome. It's been really dope, man. I mean, the city in general is really strong with the electronic music scene, and there's so many talented people in the city. Yeah, the scene is massive there. I feel like, you know, Denver, it's a, technically it's a smaller city than, than Chicago, but as yeah. far as like the music scene goes. Oh, like, yeah. It, whether it's house or bass or like everything it's just it's just yeah. everyone's into it it seems like i've had always have a blast playing we used to have a we used to throw um our a sister party in denver we used to do porn and chicken denver nice. for a while and we were out there every month for a while and it was always a blast so where did you do it at what venue it was at a it was at a couple different venues one of them was called bender's tavern it was more like a rock club or event i don't even know if it's still open or not <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And, uh, you know, we, um, and some of our partners we were doing it with was uh, Brennan. He goes by Option 4 now. He's he's like a huge promoter. And he's like throwing shows at Red Rocks and, and stuff. And he's like all over the place. And uh, Sick. shout out to Paul Anthony from Ghetto Blaster now. He's on yeah. the Dirty Bird Artist. He's doing a bunch of stuff. Was one of our residents. And uh, cool. Yeah, it was, we had like a pretty solid crew going back then. But yeah, we, I love Denver. I look forward to, to coming back again too. Dude, just come out, to play, man. or to visit, or just to hang yes. out. So, both. We'll set up a workshop for you whenever you decide to come this way. Done, done. That's a good excuse to to get out there. So. Yeah, man. Anytime. You let me know when. Sweet, All that to sweet. say, as far as the push three, do you want? Yeah. Do you want to dive into that now? Or? Let's talk about push three. So, I guess uh, if you guys are listening, if you haven't heard the news yet, Ableton just announced the push three. It's been eight years since the push two came out is that correct 2015 the push two was released yeah yeah so about eight years ago and it's, i think everyone was expecting it it's been expecting it for a long time yeah. and even when we had the private webinar with all the ableton reps it's been 10 years in the making so i think like mm. by, even before the push two came they're already thinking about all right what's next so this has been a 10 year yeah. in the making project and yeah it, it really is i i think it's a revolutionary piece of of hardware that's, that's coming too. out so it really is so i think the big i think the biggest thing is that it's it's standalone right you can there's going to be two different options one that behaves just as a controller like the push 2 does that you yep. it needs to be tethered to your laptop but it also there's a the second like the more expensive the full featured one has its own audio interface has its own cpu has its own operating system yeah uh, i think it has a 256 gigabyte hard drive which is ton of storage and uh solid you're state. gonna yeah you can transfer projects 
directly from your laptop to it or back and forth. So yep. ADAT, eight channel ADAT in and outputs, um, yeah. USB over MIDI and um, eight inch, eighth inch MIDI jacks going in and out as well. You yeah, can man. run CV in and out of it. It has Wi-Fi, so you can actually mm-hmm. transfer stuff over Wi-Fi. What what um, XY? I guess MPE pads. Yeah. Um, so what else things. is there? <laughs> what else? I could keep going. I feel like I have a list of things. I mean, I took tons of notes during. Oh, that, okay. But what are, what are, what are, what do we forget? What did I miss there? Oh uh, man, I feel like those are not even half of the things. Like. I mean, the overall <laughs> layout, I feel like they did a good job of staying to a similar layout as far as like the controller goes, but upgrading certain buttons and features to make make it easier to access certain menu options, one of them being session view. So now for session view, like you can actually see the clips and things in the display, which is really nice. So you can preview the scenes and the clips. You can also do advanced note editing with the top encoders as well. Yeah, there's a new like a new jog. The new jog wheel, I think, is is going to be huge. Oh, absolutely. The jog wheel is going to be great for just like flying through different menu things that you're looking for, or even scenes scrolling. So the cool thing too is like one thing I was having issues with is like playing in note mode, like playing the pads, and then also wanting to launch, say, the next scene in the set at the same time or trigger. And now you can do that really easy. Like you can stay in your note mode and you can jump in and you can trigger scenes. All the clip, all the scenes and clips are going to be on the on the screen up top, and then still have notes on the bottom. That's huge. I might be wrong, but I think there's a scene trigger button, so you could basically trigger when you want to go to the next scene while still playing note mode and still trigger clips as well. So yeah, so I know you could still access both. Um, you could also be in device mode. So say you're playing wavetable or something, the instrument, and you also want to work a filter, say with one hand. And so you're like doing a filter thing. Well, then you can still trigger that next scene at the same time. Wow. Yeah. That being in device view or note view. So that's kind of a nice game changer if you're playing on the fly. Before you would have to have a separate control, like a launch pad or an APC right. in conjunction. And, and that's the, the one of the biggest things I was surprised at, that you can do that in standalone now with with the new one too, if you need to still. So you could actually plug your yep. APC 40 direct into it without a computer, yeah. get all the extra faders and knobs and scene launching and have the pads to do whatever you want on the screen, which is huge. That That's massive. Not just an APC, but you could run a hub into the push. So then you can have a you mini can do hub. multiple? Yeah. Multiple so you control? Could do, wow. Right. So you could have multiple inputs of MIDI if you needed to into the push. They said that the pads on the push are 30 times more sensitive than the push two, which is a lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> so that's 30 times. <laughs> yeah, like I got to say, like I, I like the push pads, but compared to some other, I know it's, they're not my they're not my absolute favorite pads of all time. Like uh, they are, you know, you can adjust the sensitivity, but it's going to um, I think these new ones are going to be super nice. And just to, for everyone sure. knows, we haven't this is all just what we've seen from this webinar. We haven't right. had a chance to actually play them yet, so right, true. W- we might have to do like a follow up at some point <laughs> where we like get some actual like live hands on time with these, and then I just want to preference that whatever. Where this is all just just partial s- speculation based on what we were shown. <laughs> so right, exactly. We're just imagining <laughs> all the possibilities in our head from what yeah. we've been told. And what we've seen, so I'm, yeah. I'm most excited. I I want to try to like do a whole DJ set with it. So instead of just like plugging my USB into a CDJ, I'm just gonna bring that and have all my songs loaded as clips in the session view, and just go in and and play it. And I could even see like um, in the future, like expanding the I/O like with the eight ad out, and then you can get eight channels out, so you can actually plug into a DJ mixer and still use a hardware mixer in conjunction, have all the clips be in session well like that's what i'm most excited to start using it for kind of going going back to my roots of djing with ableton yeah i'm still 100 percent, man I, i'm i was on the same brainwave when we were on the webinar because i just purchased the xdj and it's funny because like i've been to parties where like i just plugged in my flash drive and i don't know how to use cdjs very well and i would just be terrible because i've always dj'd in ableton my whole life so yeah. now i'm like now i'm spending more time <laughs> getting better at this thing and using the push as like a second or third deck is definitely what I'm thinking about doing too. It's also really cool that ADAT thing. I mean, as a drummer, if I have a preamp or if I have something that can send ADAT, then I could record eight plus channels if needed, you know, into 
the push directly because it's an interface now and it receives ADAT. Yeah, it has it has two inputs already. So plus the extra, you can get up to ten channels. So technically, ten mics you can record with that, which it's enough yeah. for a lot of drum kits. Yeah, super nice. <laughs> yeah, and I th- I think when you plug in ADAT, it automatically goes from like channels nine to sixteen. I think I saw that. So in Ableton, it'll automatically be nine through sixteen as far as audio inputs. Nice, nice. So it, it's cool to see like. Just even having little things like being able to control the I.O. Let's say even yeah. if you are um, using it and just as a controller with the laptop, you're going to be able to do just a lot more that you couldn't do with Push 2. Like change I.O. settings, like save your set, you know, like create a new set. Like yeah. just all the stuff that you you couldn't do before, even with, with the computer, you know. just So I think it's, aside from the standalone, it's also going to really Im- improve workflow in the studio as well. So. Or not even just studio, but on the plane. Like if I'm flying in a plane, I could just plug <laughs> in my headphones into the push itself and then just sit there yeah, and just rock it's out. It's battery powered too. Yeah, I don't even know yeah. if you mentioned the battery. Yeah, it's battery powered and bi-directional transfer. So all of your presets, library, live set settings can go to the computer or to the push. Game changer, man. Yeah. Max for Live devices are going to work. They most of them, most of them will work, especially the ones that are included in packs. Um, I was actually talking to Alberto earlier today and just was like firing questions at him because he's had a chance to play with it. And he said, Yeah, most Max for Live devices will work. There will be some, you know, more like user created ones that might be a little jank, but for the most part, yeah, it works pretty well. And that's the other thing as far as like plugins, the Push 3 won't run BSTs. Uh, so you'd have to freeze and flatten your tracks. And then one one workflow I thought that was cool that they shared in the webinar was like using the consolidate time to new scene feature, which maybe a lot of people don't even know already exists. Yeah. In arrangement view. So you can just highlight like 16, 32, eight, eight bars, whatever. Just right click in the background of the grid in arrangement view. Just choose consolidate time to new scene. And then boom, it'll just take everything and all the tracks plop them over into session view as a new scene so that'd be a good way to move your stuff to the push yeah you, just, i, I think yeah. it's gonna really inspire a lot more producers to get into like actually doing live pa or live performance of their of their tracks you know yeah just because you know I've, I've i've worked with students and other colleagues and collaborators that needed help like programming their their ableton sets for their shows and that was always like i just that function a lot of people just don't realize it or yeah um now that you can just like put it in a box and, and almost like like A to A copy like what's in the screen to do it, it's it's gonna I th- I think it's gonna be really inspired. We're gonna see a lot more live electronic performances. I, I think coming out of this, a hundred percent. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah, yeah. The tuner is a nice update because you play guitar. You're a badass guitar yeah. player, and um. You know, it might be nice to be able to have a visual tuner on the new push as well. You can preview yeah, it. Yeah, just to see it on the screen, like I just like making it that big and like and the cool thing too, like we've seen some demos with the webinar, you can literally just plug your guitar straight into it. Yeah. I think it has like a high Z input mode, so you don't even need to you don't need a DI box or any kind of other inputs. It'll just go right in and get that high Z input to get a nice clean guitar capture. Yep. which is also kind of game changer, you know. Just, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> the hot swap button might be nice too. There's like a hot swap button. I think it's like just to the right of the display or something. You just tap that. Oh, nice. You have a sample. You can instantly swap it real fast. There was like more involved on the push too. You had to do. You have to. You would have to go to browse mode and then yeah. select the device and then go. But here, just boom, one button. I th- I think that's yeah. That's gonna be a huge time saver as well. Yep. There's like the foot switch jack. I'm just going through notes randomly, just like scatterbrained. Yeah. <laughs> foot switch jack can output CV and gate up to four signals. And it could also it could also be like a it could be a switch or expression input, correct? So you can have like a yeah, that that's that's gonna be awesome. I mean, even for guitar or I can imagine like controlling filters with your foot while you're playing pads with your hands while you're mm-hmm. you're mixing. That's 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 yep. huge. And the push can also receive CV as well. So control values, like, you know, if people are messing around with modular or their hardware. I mean, I've I've had to carry around like a small interface to all my shows 
And now I'm just like, why would I ever want to carry another audio interface out of my studio? Like if I just right, take my push right. with me. It's it's all in one. Like that's yeah. it's yeah. Other products that are that are similar to this, I don't I don't think there's the Akai Force. I don't know if we should talk about the the force. Like it's kind of a maybe a little bit controversial within the, the Ableton <laughs> trainer topic. It's a touchy but, subject, man. I mean, no, I mean, have you I had it so just just to throw it out there, you know, in case the Akai did release a product a few years ago called the Akai Force, yeah, which was kind of a standalone push. It, it worked as a controller and standalone, but it never. I don't know. I don't think I don't know anyone that ever actually used it like in any kind of serious performance or studio applications. Have you? Are you familiar with that piece? Have you had a chance to check it out? I haven't personally played with it, but I talked on the podcast with Younger. He's like mm-hmm. uh he's like a solo performer. He does a lot of live looping and he likes it, but I don't but I think he even kind of admitted he doesn't really use the full capabilities of it. He just really uses it for quick looping. Um but yeah, he, I think he likes that. He likes it. I mean, it looks it looks I don't know, it doesn't it's not sleek at all. It looks kind of like it was like two different things like Frankenstein together a little bit. It's mm-hmm. it has like a maybe a big screen and, and it can it can work in standalone mode and it's it's more like kind of like mpc style production and sampling sampling yeah. but I, I i don't think um just just as far as like being able to translate what you're doing exactly in the session view mm-hmm. into live into the hardware there's no other hardware no that, that works like that like no um when i did uh i went on i was in in the band the kind of the industrial super group kind of revolving door band called pig face in 2019 and um and it, it was like a like every show we'd have at least like 10 or 11 different members and my role was to play all the beats and loops and samples all the electronic stuff and then there would be like two or three drummers and two bass players and a couple of guitar players and a bunch of vocalists and um we had ever like some of the the, the founding members martin atkins who was in public image limited and he played with ministry and nine inch nails and oh nice man danny carey from tool the, dr- the drummer from tool played a bunch of the shows with us randy oh, Blythe, tight. the singer of lamb of god did the whole tour with us and i remember some came up DM and stuff it, it, it was crazy so anyways but it was my role like all the rest of the band had to follow me because i would it was each song would like start with a drum loop or um a different sample or something like that and it and it's and it's like i had to trigger them all um from uh for, for me and then all the other drummers and the rest of the band would follow so if i was off i would crash the whole band so it was a lot of pressure <laughs> no on pressure me. at all good luck yeah and it's like these mega huge like at, musicians that have been playing for third you know decades and decades and did some legendary shit so it was a lot of pressure on me kind of i was like one of the youngest members in the band too and like the newest so but anyway so while i was like building up i was originally triggering everything i set it all up all the loops and stuff i was going to be scenes in ableton to perform it and while we were like doing pre-production and kind of the early stages of rehearsals for the show my laptop just like crashed on me it totally took a shit oh no i was like working on a different project and i installed an audio driver for a Motu interface and it just like if it like bricked my whole computer like it was a relatively it was only a year old at the time too so my computer was out for a week and i'm like getting kind of nervous and so then i i, I switched to using a, a hardware sampler the Taraya's sp16 which is also um it's a piece they, they did with pioneer dj so it was like a studio sampler and i ended up like kind of building the show around that and i kind of still had everything in ableton also as a backup but my computer was just like kind of acting funky. Like it's just like uh, after after I got it back, I just didn't trust it to do the whole show with it. So I shifted gears to um, relying mostly on the hardware sampler, and um, the whole tour went good. And I still had a- I still used Ableton for a bunch of other stuff that tour. I was I was using my um, Roly Seaboard block to to play some uh, some MPE instruments in Ableton Live during yeah. the show, and I did I I still used Ableton a lot, but most of the loops I stayed on the hardware just because. I didn't trust my, I trusted Ableton, but I didn't trust my computer. And that was like a big kind of setback. And, you know, yeah. all the big touring shows where, let's say you're, you're running back end sound for Beyonce or, or Britney Spears or something like that. Like they yeah. are running Ableton. 
they're all you you kind of need a redundant computer system with two computers to yeah. do it but um yeah. but now it's like all right now that this the push three is out I, i'm hoping it's going to be way more stable than my laptop just because yeah. it's like and and i'm hoping that i'm able to do this kind of on on live just from the fred fragilities of a a full computer like based system so no 100 percent. i think it's going to be game changer if if it's stable we'll see you yeah hopefully it's it's rock solid and it's not there's not going to crash or do any glitches and stuff like that but i I'm, I'm pretty confident that it will be or at least as good or maybe better than than the stability of my macbook so right well i mean you think about it there's it's designed really for one purpose Right, exactly. It was created by the people that make the software. Exactly. So the people that make the <laughs> software made the hardware. So that's an encouraging sign. I mean, Apple doesn't make Ableton. So it, Exactly. Yeah, you know, I would hope and expect that it'd be more consistent in the long term and be able to handle more. I I hope so. I I'm 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 I have super high hopes for it. I'm I'm yeah. putting money on that it's it's going to be <laughs> so me too. Yeah, and from what we've heard from very credible sources at Ableton, everybody seems pretty happy with the results. And and even, you know, this is not necessarily a processor issue, but uh, I was talking to Alberto and he was saying he was mind blown at how fast it is to transfer sets from the push to your computer and vice versa. It's like pretty much all, within a second. <laughs> it's just like, wow. Oh. Yeah, I mean, if it's, it's, it's got a good Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, if you have a decent a Wi-Fi connection. Solid state hard drive inside, like you can't... Yeah. Re- one one of the craziest things, though, I, I think, which is insanely awesome that not no other hardware is really doing, is that the whole thing is designed to be fully upgradable. Mm-hmm. So, like later on, like if a better processor comes out, you can actually swap the whole processor out. Or later mm-hmm. on, if you want to upgrade your <laughs> yeah. your storage, let's say you want a terabyte solid state, you can yep. you're going to be able to swap it out. And it, yeah. I guess if if you purchase the the non standalone one, the tethered version that doesn't have the CPU in it, you can you're going to be able to buy a, an upgrade kit and install all the hardware yourself, exactly. and then just kind of build upon it. So, I guess like the, the price points, I think it's going to be at one thousand for the tethered version, and then about two thousand for the fully standalone one. But if you buy the, if you start out with just the the tethered one, and you decide later on, hey, I want to go, I want to go. I want to go standalone. You can do that, which I don't know any other software or hardware that's upgradable like that. Have Have you heard right. of anything or not off the top of my head that I know yeah, of? Not not that's like a MIDI controller of sorts. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, you can't even upgrade your your MacBook anymore either. But this right. is it's pretty Dude. awesome that they're they're building that in this this future future proofing it basically. Pretty You're much gonna be able to upgrade the operating system, upgrade the CPU, upgrade the hard drive, like what? A, yep. Probably even the sound, maybe even I/O later on as well. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? They created it with an Intel chip because of the the flexibility and the capabilities of upgrading. So that gives that gives a lot more options as far as that goes. So, yeah, man, it, it's going to be really interesting. There's just a lot of even features on the push too, outside of the hardware that I think are really cool. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned like there's a new warp to grid button feature, so like you can just click a button and instantly warps everything for you pretty so fast. I mean, there's um the auto warp algorithm has been improved in Live 11.3. Yeah, I've been running the beta version of 11.3 for a long time now. I gotta say, I I don't like the new auto warp <laughs> algorithm. That's one thing. Really. I, I've experimented with it with a lot of different types of tracks. And um, mm-hmm. if you know from DJing ever in live, certain songs are way easier to warp than others. So for sure with, with house music or techno or any kind of elect modern electronic dance music, it's stuff that's it's non fluctuating beats. The beats are it's one locked in tempo. It's usually yeah. a nice, even number all the way through from start to finish. And what, what the new algorithm does is when you drop in like a, a modern dance song, that's, very clear cut beats in one tempo all the way through. It puts a warp marker at every bar, and it makes it, it's, it unnecessarily adds too many warp markers. I feel like, and um, hmm. and some of them are they they're always a little bit off, like they're just not hmm. as tight. The transients aren't as tight to the grid as if I would like them to be if I would have warped it myself. Yeah, so I'm I'm skeptical on that. I think they there's still some bugs in there with the 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 new and improved auto warp function 
Mm-hmm. Um, I did find that when you are warping, I guess, live music that doesn't have a locked in tempo, like any kind of so- stuff that was played with a live band or a live drummer that does um, speed up and slow down as it's playing, it does work better for that, though. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. I, I found that it was able to kind of lock it in, but it's not quite perfect for, for, for dance music yet. But for my use cases, I always end up just warping it myself. I never have auto warp on. It's very rare. Same. That I do anyways. It's I'm just like warping it myself anyways because I I like to choose exactly where it's those beats are those transients are hitting. But um, but yeah, I I it it might make certain things out or they might still be improving it too. But try it out. See if you if do some experiments with the. Are you running the beta? Eleven point three. So I did download the beta and then I deleted it because I always keep forgetting that I'm in the beta when I'm working on tracks I'm wanting to release. And I'm like, go back later. And I was like, damn it, I was just worked on like four hours of this track in beta on accident. And then I have to go back and like, yeah, because then it's always in that beta version. So I've, I've, I, you know what, I, this recent beta, I, I switched over. I just deleted the, the non beta. I'm only running the beta now for everything. I'm just like, I'm committed. I'm just like, <laughs> screw it. I'm in. I'm not committed all, to the beta I'm, I'm all in 11.3 let's go baby yeah all, all, <laughs> it's not i mean it's it's stable it's not crashing it's yeah. just the, the little things like that the auto warp which i don't use anyways is i just turn off auto warp long samples in the browser yeah. or in the preferences anyway and honestly i think i personally would much rather have an auto warp upgraded feature that deals with more of the inconsistent live music aspect than the dance music because that's always the easiest just to warp you just throw it in exactly. there exactly change the exactly. tempo and turn on warp or you know right click and auto warp long sample or something you know it's it usually works so yeah yeah but what do you think of drift have you played with drift much yeah no I've, I've been using drift a bunch um that's that was like one the big inspiration to kind of shift over to sticking with the beta because i start as soon as i it, I, I tried it. I started using it in a bunch of tracks, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Now I'm, I'm committed. I gotta, I gotta stay with it. Just like Dude. just for drift alone, like it's so Same. warm. And it's it's it kind of comes alive when you know those the unison modes and the stereo modes. It's just like they're they're magic. It really is. You, it's hard to make those sound bad on whatever. You can have like very minimal sound design experience under your belt, and just you can get in drift and make some really awesome sounding patches like without a whole lot of work um they're making it easy and um it's a very inviting synth it yeah it sounds like a warm hug and it's there's not too many crazy (laughs) buttons the interface is pretty easy just to jump into it's nice yeah no i i I dig it i've been using it a bunch lately and the cool thing about drift too which is a first for all versions live it's going to be included even in the intro and the standard version right if anyone's not yeah. rock and sweet you're still going to get drift which is pretty huge yeah that was a nice uh gift from ableton to include that for everybody i think that they're doing that because uh, it's going to be built into the push three standalone so like mm-hmm. if you have it without if you don't buy the suite you can still use the push yeah. three like with the the lighter or standard sense. versions and you're still going to at least get drift yeah that makes a lot of sense too, because you do get intro when you purchase the push three. Yeah, it it would it would be cool to. Um, it's interesting because on Ableton Note, um, have you been have you used use Ableton Note the iOS device? I have. Yeah, I've played with it a little bit. I played with it on the plane when I was coming back from Israel a couple of weeks ago, and it's awesome. So, like all the sounds in Note are, I guess, are made with Wavetable, or so I'm. I, I'm pretty sure. Really. So you would think that. that. You don't use wavetable with sweet. Um, so it's interesting that they they might be like drift is becoming like their new mm. kind of flagship. You would think that maybe I don't know, maybe they would have included wavetable with with all versions, but wavetable is pretty badass on its own. Yeah, they, it is. They they probably they, it's easier for them to justify the sweet upgrade price to, to get wavetable. You know, I agree. I no. totally agree. And Max for Live, just alone. I think anybody oh, yeah. who's really anybody really serious about making music with Ableton, for me, it just makes sense to get sweet. Definitely, um, definitely, it's worth the extra couple hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you get the upgrades later, and you save money upgrading. So yeah, and it's really you know Max for Live. It's it's an un, it's an unlimited amount of creative potential. That's few other devices. You know, like you can literally. For anyone who's listening that is not familiar, you can build your own synthesizer. You can build your own effects. And 
Mm-hmm. Go to maxforlive.com and there's like almost 6,000 de- user-made devices that you can so run. So many. And then there's even more. If you dig deeper on the internet, you'll find even tons of boutique instrument designers out there that are making them that are only selling them on their gum road or their their website or whatever. It's just like a whole plethora of ex- creative potential. <laughs> so For sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, even just the packs alone, there's so many things in packs I haven't even seen. I mean, I've been using Live consistently since 2013, and I still haven't even gone through maybe like half of the packs. <laughs> there's just so much there. One of our perks is uh, they hook us up. We get access to check out all of the packs offered from Ableton.com. Yeah, and, a um, lot. There's, yeah, it's so much. It's So unfortunately, this is the part where our episode was cut short and we had recording difficulties, but no worries. I plan on having Orville back. I'm going to force him to come to Denver and hang out and do an in-person podcast, which I'm excited to announce very soon. The podcast is going to be getting a big upgrade. More details to come soon as far as more in-person interactive podcasts. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Thanks, everybody, for listening once again to the podcast. If you want to be the first to get new episodes once again and stay updated with the latest happenings in the Ableton world and receive free new packs and devices on occasion, join the newsletter, and I will try not to spam you. I'll send you emails that hopefully will tickle your fancy and keep you updated. If you want to join, go to liveproducersonline.com slash newsletter and check back for new episodes every other Tuesday, and I will see you next time. Later.